Hey guys, welcome back to Unreal Labs. Thanks for tuning back in. So today is part one of our Unreal Core video series. We did our last video on uh, VMware, just to show you how I was actually putting this together, but we're going to simulate um, Unreal Core uh, business. I don't know what we make, but uh, we're gonna be adding that Windows 22 server, 2022 server in there. We're gonna have some workstations. We're gonna have Cisco switching. We're gonna have uh, 40 net firewalls that we're gonna to add to the stack here up to that rack uh, to be our firewalls for our head, head, uh, HQ and remote site. Um, we're gonna create an IPsec tunnel. Um, so there's gonna be some good stuff. We're gonna do file permissions, DHCP, DNS, um, some Windows 11 uh, group policy, uh, scripts to do map drives. We can do some batch scripting. So we've got quite a bit going on in this series. Um, so yeah, stay tuned and let's jump in. All right, so here's the Visio of the future Unreal Labs Corporation. Uh, as you can see, we have our HQ site here, our headquarters, and then we have a remote site eventually. Um, today, we're gonna just be dealing with PC1 and the Cisco switch. <clears throat> but in the future, we're going to have, you know, multiple VLANs, like I said, the IPsec tunnel. Uh, we're going to have a remote domain controller, uh, remote sales guy, remote switching, um, possibly maybe some dynamic routing between this IPsec tunnel. We'll see how that goes. Pretty fun stuff. So today is just part one. So we're actually just going to get their DC1 install going. Um, we're going to create some VLANs on the Cisco switch for the Unreal Corp. Um, so we'll be kind of going through these steps here. And I'll be creating just the basic user accounts for Cindy Williams, John Baker, and Mike Johnson. I don't know who those people are, but we're going to make them user accounts. <clears throat> we're also going to... Uh, I'm gonna go over just a little bit more on the VMware. So how I kind of, you know, uh, virtualize this in that VMware workstation environment and how it connects. So I am connecting these to uh, virtual NICs. So I have three NICs active in this lab. Eventually there'll be possibly four or five that we'll be adding um, from VM workstation into some physical equipment, into the physical switching on the rack um, <coughs> to, you know, create our VLANs and uh, separate our traffic. Um, as you can see, there's quite a few steps that we're going to be having, that we're gonna be doing. So part three will, or excuse me, yeah, part two will be um, adding the workstations and then the appropriate VLANs for those. We're gonna be adding an extra file server as Unreal Labs grows or Unreal Labs Corp grows. Uh, we're gonna definitely have the firewall set up for those 40 nets, and that might be a two-part series depending on how detailed I want to get there. Just for because I'm just really trying to keep this video, these this series, just a basic uh, setup. This isn't an advanced setup or anything like that. It's just just a basic tutorial uh, for guys that I just want to show you how things fit together and and as we do some troubleshooting, this is gonna be the lab that we'll be doing on. So we'll definitely be able to do some advanced stuff, but I do wanna keep it just low level right now as we go forward, um, just to get everybody on the same page. Uh, then, like I said, we'll do the IPsec connection, uh, starting with that remote site, and then we'll be doing the DC uh, and the sales machine. So at the end of it, I'll be doing some basic security. We'll, we'll add some ACLs in here, We'll start denying some traffic, possibly over our IPsec tunnel, because we might want to limit, you know, maybe things that Mike Johnson wants to see. I would also like to do an uh, SSL VPN um, into the uh, headquarters firewall, and then have some traffic uh, go over that IPsec tunnel um, into maybe the remote site to to kind of emulate or, or virtualize, let's say, Mike Johnson, the sales guy, you know, traveling around. So we've got a lot to cover, but I'm going to try to keep these videos short. I had, I wanted this one to be a little bit longer just because I wanted to explain kind of what we were going to be doing in the series. Uh, but let's jump in. All right, so let's jump over to uh, our VMware lab here. So we've got, uh, let's do the configuration here for DC1. Um, just for some basic settings here, I want to get an IP address on it. I'd also like to rename it because it's probably going to have some ghetto name here that we don't want. So let's log in here.
All right, and it's going to open up in the server manager dashboard. And we will go to local server. And I want to check a couple things. I, I like to shut off the firewall, especially when I'm configuring right off the bat. So let's look at the firewall protection. So domain's off, private's off, public is on. Let me turn that off real quick. Just on Windows Defender. And then we'll look at the computer name, which is kind of a mess. So we need to rename that, right? Because we are going to be Unreal DC1. So we want to change that to OK. And it's going to ask us to restart. I'm going to hold off on that just for a second. And we also need to assign an IP because it's currently set for DHCP. So we'll click on that box right there. Double click. We'll go to properties. And I just want to make sure IP6 is off, which it is. And we'll open up uh, IP4 settings and we will drop in our IP address. So 10.10.100.10 is where we're going to start this server off on. 2.5250. And then our default gateway is going to be 1, which is going to be the layer 3 interface on the switch. So 10.10.100.1. And since we don't have a DNS server or any uh, internet correct on this uh, setup currently, we're just going to do 127.0.0.1. We're just going to point it back at itself. And that'll help us um, when we're doing our domain uh, Active Directory service install. So we'll hit OK on that. OK. OK. And then I'm going to do a quick restart here. That's what I love about VMware. It is super fast compared to a physical server. Now I get a sip of coffee. <clears throat> now let's actually jump over to our switch. So this is a non-configured switch. So I cleared the configuration off this switch and I've deleted all the VLAN uh, configuration that was on here. So the VLAN.dat file I've wiped out. So if we uh, go to enable mode. Like I said, the switch is just switch right now. No host name. If we show VLAN brief, um, we're only going to have the default VLAN 1. So we need to create, looking back at our diagram here, we've got three VLANs to create in this lab. So we've got VLAN 100, 101, 102. And I've matched the VLAN number to the third octet of the subnet, I try to, I tr I do try to do that. It's something where the, you know, it makes sense with the VLAN to the. So if you're looking at the IP address in your network, you could know that. Oh, well, that's VLAN 100. That's VLAN 101. I mean, your name convention could be totally different. That's just what I choose to use. So let's look at this next uh, slide here. And so we've got, like I said, we got the DC one we need to configure, and we need to do some basic configuration um, on that 3750. So let's let's jump over to 3750. Let's do this first. Um, and then we'll worry about uh, the AD installation. So let's jump back to our switch here. So we're going to create three VLANs, right? We need to create a host name for our switch. We need to do some basic config, like IP routing setting on our switch. Um, let's set the console password. Let's set the VTY for Telnet password. Let's set an enable mode password, of course. Um, so we can just get at least a basic configuration on our what's called our core switch. Um, so let's go to config T, and I'm going to do host name, and right after that we can put our word in. So I'm going to do uh, so. Let's do uh, Unreal Switch One. <clears throat> so that way, if we add another switch, we can have Switch Two. And then let's uh, do VLAN 100, and let's name it. Uh, server VLAN and VLAN 101, I believe, is engineering. Let's, my memory isn't super great. Yeah, so yeah, engineering is 101 and accounting is 102. So uh, name and then VLAN 102, and we'll name that accounting, right? All right, and so we've made our layer two interfaces or, you know, our basic layer two VLAN. And now we need to add the layer three part to those VLANs, right? So if we, because if we're looking, if we exit here and we go show run interface VLAN 100, it's going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. There's no, there's nothing like that. But if we do a show VLAN brief, 
it is going to show us the the VLAN is there and it's active, but that's just the layer two part of the VLAN. So let's we need to add layer three interface to it. So or they're just a basic layer two VLAN. So interface VLAN 100. That's going to create the interface, and I'm going to assign an IP address. And I like to assign just one to the last octet. Um, it helps me with like default gateways and things like that. So just to just to remember like what what a gateway would be on a certain VLAN for for a network. And like I said, this is a small business network, so we want to keep it kind of stupid simple, especially if you're a consultant and you're not there full time. Um, if you're only doing three or four hours a day, um, or a, a maybe a week, or maybe even a month, like it's it's better to to keep things really really simple. That way, if someone's taking over your work, um, you know, for them, notes are going to be fairly easy to create if you don't provide them. So let's do a no shut, and then interface VLAN one hundred and one IP address. 10.10.101, like I said, I matched that third octet. And then no shut. And then interface VLAN 102. 10.102.10.0 slash 24. No shut. All right. So we haven't assigned any interfaces to or excuse me, we haven't assigned it yet, assigned any ports to those VLANs yet, which we will need to do, but let's go and make our, uh, let's add our passwords to our switch here. So config T, so configuration mode, and then line console zero, con zero, and we'll do a password. I'm just gonna do Cisco. I use that usually for my lab, and then line BTY zero through four. So that'll be our Telnet, um, there's more advanced configuration to do an SSH connection. We don't need that in the lab. We can add it later. I do definitely just at least want Telnet working. Uh, so password, and I'm going to do Cisco also, and then log in. And then before I save anything, this is just something from experience I've done. I don't necessarily save it. I log out of the switch. I go back in. I verify my password's working. That way, if I have, if I've messed up, <clears throat> I can have the switch rebooted. You know, it'll roll back to whatever settings it had before, um, and I can get back into the switch. So we need to create our enable password. So configuration terminal again, config T, enable pass. I know this is this this is you know you can use definitely use secret if you want at level. There's there's a difference between the two. I'm not going to get into that right now, but I want to specify level 15, which is the highest level. And then I'm going to put my password Cisco on it. And like I said, I exit this again because I'm anal about this. I've been locked out so many times before technicians have. They're not checking, and they save it right after their work. Um, so I'm pretty happy now that that's working. So I'm going to right run that. And we've got a couple more steps here. So if I show start, and I haven't hidden, I haven't encrypted any of the passwords. This is, like I said, just a basic lab. I kind of want to take this step by step here. So I don't have IP routing enabled I don't, here yet. So I need to do that. So configuration terminal IP routing. Let's get that in there. Show run. I need to do no logging real quick. That's driving me crazy. Um, yeah, so that's good. That looks fine. And then... Let's show interface status. This is a command that's going to show me all the connected interfaces that are currently connected and running. Now, you can do, if you do show interface status, it's going to give you every interface, but that might not be what you're looking for. So we, we're filtering it on uh, status connected here. So that, back to that other command, status connected, or include connected, and... I know in my lab currently that uh, VLAN 100 or that that uh, VMware server here. Let's go back to this and show you settings. So settings, I do know that this VM Net 3 is connected to FA uh, zero or 101. Uh, so that this is currently where 
uh, that VM net three is connected. So we need to like add, we need to change this from the default VLAN here, VLAN one to VLAN one hundred. So let's make that change. So config key interface FA one zero one. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN one hundred right. And then we'll put description um, server VLAN. And we'll save that. All right, so we've got a basic configuration on our switch. We've got VLANs created uh, for the most part, for at least for this this setup. We've got IP routing enabled. Um, so in our future parts of our lab, we can go from our, our clients can actually get over to VLAN 100, and we can get back to like VLAN 101 and 102. We've added some passwords for some basic security on the switch, so not just anybody can now log into it. Not that they couldn't guess Cisco, <clears throat> but let's uh, let's drop back over to our our uh, server here and log back into it. And we have set the IP address here, so we should do some basic testing here. So I'm going to open a command prompt. And I'm going to just ping that interface on the switch, and we should get a reply back. So we are pinging that layer three interface on that Cisco switch. And we possibly should be able to ping. Maybe we'd be good on 101. Yep, because IP routing is enabled. We should be able to blast over to 102. All right, perfect. So that is looking good. So now, like I said, we've got, let's just go back. We get our name, we get this the switch configured for the most part. We've got an IP address configured. So let's jump into the next step of adding Active Directory services. So let's go up to manage here. Let's go back. Let's manage, add roles and features. We'll click next. And we're yep, role-based or feature-based installation. And we're going to select either this server or something from a pool. Uh, so you you could see other servers here. We only have one. That's what we're going to select. Yeah, we want Unreal DC one. There's going to be two roles that we're going to pick here. One is this Active Directory domain services. So we're going to add features on that. And then the next one we also want is DNS. And well, because DNS is crucial to Active Directory, so it, you can't have it without the other. So we'll we'll get those, and we don't need anything else right now. We'll hit next, and then on features, we could add some features if we if we wanted to, but currently on this, we're just doing uh, the two we've selected. Yep, so we, we can read through that if we want. We'll hit next, and then DNS just giving us some, some information there. And then we're going to say, yeah, I'd like to go through with this, so we'll hit install. And this will take a minute, <clears throat> so I'll pause the video, and then we'll pick it back up. All right, so our features and roles have been installed. Everything looks good. No uh, serious errors. We'll hit close on that. So Active Directory is just the components are put in. We still need to finish the configuration, so we need to actually come up here to the bang up top, and we need to promote this to a domain control. So we're going to select that hyperlink. And that's going to open the deployment configuration. So there's some options we need to choose. So we're going to add a domain controller to an existing domain. No. We're going to add a new domain to an existing forest, or we're going to add a new forest. Which one do you think we should choose? I'm just joking. We're going to choose this add a new forest. So we're um, the domain root name. I think we chose, what did we choose here? I don't think I wrote it down. So we are going to do Unreal Labs here. And I like local. So when I'm, you could do com if you wanted. I'm going to, this is kind of a split brain uh, DNS. So I'm going to do local just for my lab. But you could do com or net or whatever.
Now that top option, add domain controller to an existing domain, we're going to do that in, in that next part here uh, on a remote site. So we're going to add this to the Unreal Labs domain. So that's the option we'll be choosing for this DC1 installation over here in the remote site. All right, so functional level we can choose. I think 2016 is where we're at. Let's me get back here. Yeah, that's good. And we don't want it to be a read-only domain controller. That'd be dumb, right? Can't, we need to definitely be able to write to it. So I do want global catalog. That needs to be checked. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a global catalog in any of your other servers, but there's a reason we'll get into that later. Uh, or if you have questions, I can definitely answer that in the comment section below. Now I'm going to choose my DSRM password, so for my re restore mode. I'll throw my password in there that I would like for that. Hit next. And I'm not going to do this. I don't think I can even choose that setting because it's, it's not .com or .local. There's no. So we'll hit next. Now it should show us our net BIOS domain name, and it should just be Unreal Labs. Yep, there it is. We'll hit next again. And now we'll get to pass and pass. We can kind of save the AD, um, not kind of, we can save the database, the log files to different partitions. Um, if you had multiple drives set up on your server, <clears throat> or maybe different RAID arrays that you were, you know, uh, had configured on your DC, you could save these in different drives, especially if you wanted uh, possibly some better performance, or maybe those RAID drives have, you know, maybe you have a RAID 10, so you'd have better, you'd have speed and, re and, and better redundancy, and you can, you could lose two disks, um, or maybe, you, maybe something else, maybe it's a RAID 6. But right now I have one virtual drive in here, so we're just going to be using the C drive for that. We'll hit next. And that looks good. And we'll hit next again. Now it's going to run through some prerequisites, making sure we're all good. And we have installed, if we didn't have DNS server installed, we would have, I believe it would throw an error here or, or a bang that would tell you that it needs to actually add that role or, you know, yeah, add that role before it can continue. All right, so we've got some bangs for some things, but it's not as, like, so, so these errors you're going to see quite a bit. So, you know, the, the default security, I always see that. Not that we can't change that in some policy, but we're, we don't have to worry about it on this installation. And then, and then a delegation error, like you can see, um, this error explains kind of what, what that would be. Now, some people get stuck here, and they're like, oh, my gosh, I've got some bangs, and I, what am I supposed to do? We're going to move forward with the install. It's totally fine. So this should take, I don't know, maybe maybe five minutes or something on this little lab. On a faster server, it, it doesn't take too long. Um, if you're adding a DC to an existing forest or an existing domain, depending on site links, you could take it could take a little bit longer. But I'm gonna pause and let this finish up. Actually, let's just roll through. I'll just be quick. I kind of want you to see this up here on the progress here, what it's doing. So it says it's moving forward. All right, so it's telling us it's finished and it's time to sign out and restart. So when it restarts, we are going to have a domain controller. Our first DC in, in the forest. And we've got a couple things we need to do to finish up. So I wanted to, on this video, uh, 
I want to create some user accounts. So we're actually going to create a couple um, OUs, and then we're going to put those people inside the appropriate OU. So we'll make an engineering, accounting, and sales OU, and then we'll put those people in them. And I know Washington this webcam stinks. I need to buy a better webcam. Sorry about that. All right, let's get back over here. I know this video is going to run a little long. I appreciate you guys. If you're still watching, I appreciate it. Make sure you, you can give me a subscribe or, or a like um, or hit the bell notifications. Like I said, there's going to be quite a few parts to this series. Um, I hope you guys will, will follow along. Come on, DC1. Let's go. All right, we're finally back here. So let's log into this guy. So as you notice here, instead of just being an administrator, it's it now saying Unreal Labs uh, backslash uh, administrator. So log in here, same password as it was on the local administrator. Just an FYI, if you're wondering. Yes, we're fine with that. <clears throat> Get a local server here. All right, things are coming up really, really well. All right, so if we click over on tools on the right side in the above menu there, we now have some new fancy uh, programs or applications that we now have on this domain controller on the server. So we have Active Directory users and computers, sites and services. We have a PowerShell module for Active Directory so we can do things with PowerShell where we don't have to actually have a GUI. Um, we have domains and trusts, and then we have the administrator center, which is kind of a neat place to to manage your Active Directory. Um, I don't use it as much as I guess I should, but there is some things we're going to cover when we do some file um, server maintenance and things like that. We're going to be using some of this dynamic access control. But let's go back to where we want to be, and we want Active Directory users and computers. Like I said, we have a couple of OUs we need to make and we have some users accounts we need to configure. So I'm only gonna do one, um, yeah, we'll just go through. I don't wanna make this video uh, too long here. What am I at, 23 minutes? Wow, pretty long. So we've got some basic containers in here. So we've got any kind of computers that we would have joined in the main would defaultly show up in this uh, computers OU. <clears throat> and I'll show you actually on the next video how we can stage that. So we don't actually have to have them just show up in computers. We can stage computers in different uh, uh, organization units. Uh, we've got domain controllers, which this server resides in, and that's where it's going to reside. And there's some group policies that are configured right off the bat um, on this OU. And then we've got our... Um, Another important one is the users directory or OU. So we've got where our administrator account lives and we've got some other groups and users like the guest user that is in here. I'm actually going to create um, a new OU and I'm gonna call it Unreal Labs. And I'm gonna check this box here. I like to keep that protected container from accidental deletion. That's a pretty nice feature that, that, that I think that came along in 2012 R2 maybe before then, but uh, before in like 2000 and 2003, like you could you could have an admin blow something out pretty fast and then you'd have to restore uh, that object or that container. And I'm gonna make three organization units underneath this. So uh, let's do one first. So engineering, right, and then we've got a sales, right? We want that one, and then we've got an accounting. 
Notice we have no production. I don't know what we make here. We're good to go. So we've got a couple users. I'm just going to create one. So what was Cindy Williams? She is in accounting. So let's do her first here. So I'm going to right click in this white space and I'm going to hit new and I'm going to do a user. And I'm going to fill out some of her specs here. So Cindy, I could spell. Williams. And I'll do, uh, let's do C. Williams as her, as her login name. And I'll choose a password for. And then I'm going to, you've got a couple options here. I'm going to leave this user must change password next login so we can show that when she logs into the domain for the first time. So to simulate maybe a new user. Uh, we can also do some password never expires. The user can't change his password. Or we can even stage the account and just to disable the account, even though we're creating users. I've seen this happen. You know, people do this quite a bit. I'm going to leave the account um, uh, enabled. We'll hit next and finish. And that creates our Cindy Williams account. Now, if we open her up and we check out properties, there's a bunch of things in here that we're going to get to. Um, her profile pass, maybe for a home folder. Um, we could fill out her telephone information. Some of these settings are quite important for like Azure migrations. You know, the more you can fill these things out, uh, the better some of those migrations to the cloud for like Office 365 is. And, and this also, users can look this up for Exchange. So these are important. If you can't fill out certain things, you definitely should. I know a lot of companies won't, but I don't see why you wouldn't, um, especially if you wanted to, you know, know who the manager of this person was. Um, we've got some dial-in attributes, and I'm, I know you guys probably know this, and it's boring, but I kind of want to cover it. So we can use this for some remote access. Um, we can, you know, assign static IPs from a range if we want through a DHCP server. We can put maybe a different IP, you know, a, a static route in uh, when they connect. Um, there's all kinds of, of neat things we can do um, just based off this here. We can add her to certain groups. So if we wanted to make her, you know, domain admin right off the bat, um, we definitely could could make her domain admin. I'm not doing that, but uh, we definitely could. So just wanted to show you that. Let's see, what else should we go through? Well, let's, let's move on here. Let's make those other two user accounts. And uh, so this guy, remember new user right and what was his name something something right something 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 like jobs sales so am johnson is going to be our naming convention here Finish him and then right click on engineering, new, or you can use the white space if you want. If you feel more comfortable with just using the white space, that's way you know you're in the folder, in that organization unit. And what was his name? Let's see here. John Baker. John Baker. I know this is boring. I apologize. I just wanted to finish this up on the video. Jay Baker. All right. Uh, the other important thing too, just to just to highlight, and we'll be doing this also is uh, where is it account? I use this feature quite a bit. Like if you want to lock down maybe his login times, maybe he's a production user, and you know uh, he shouldn't be clocking into the domain until you know eight in the morning. You can set that here. You can also set what machines he's able to log into on the domain. So we can do all computers if we want, um, or we can lock him down. Like I said, maybe he's a production user, and we only need three machines this, this guy can log into, um, that's that's where we would set that. So it's a pretty handy feature. Um, we can expire his account if it's a temp, maybe an auditor or temporary user. Uh, and then we have some other options down here we could definitely go through. So there's quite a bit of things we can do. Um, let's check, make sure we've signed off on this lab here. I think we've got everything we've needed to do. Yes, we have. So. Just for a recap, all right, we've done our core switch. We've got that configured. We've configured the Windows 2022 server uh, to be a DC. We've made a couple of OUs uh, for engineering, accounting, and sales. We've made some user accounts in there for our next lab moving forward. Um, I'm really, really, really excited 
to use these bad boys so uh i hope you guys will stick around and if you don't like this kind of a style of labbing i'm just trying to make it more interesting instead of just having some basic like here's how you do cisco switching or this is how you do windows server or something you know i i would like to have something that's just uh kind of follows along um if you guys don't like it don't like it but uh i hope you will um you know subscribe give me a like i really appreciate your time and uh yeah come on back all right talk to you soon